let's investigate the matrix representation of the Toffoli gate. First, let's look at the matrix representation of the controlled knot gate. The controlled knot gate can be denoted by Cx. And we can actually express this as a linear combination of Pauli matrix tensor products. We have the terms that are denoted by ii plus zi plus ix minus zx. So each of these terms are Pauli matrix tensor products. This is not matrix multiplication. This is taking the tensor product of two matrices that are two by two matrices. So we have a two by two matrix tensor product with another two by two matrix, and that gives us a four by four matrix. So all four of these terms are four by four matrices. And if we evaluate the sum of this linear combination, we will get the matrix representation of controlled knot. And all the matrix representations in this video are being done in the two qubit computational basis. Alternatively, we can write this as the Ket bra combination with zeros over here, tensor product with the identity, plus the Ket bra combination with ones, tensor product Pali X. So this is a Ket bra, and this is also a Ket bra. The order over here is very important. We're using the order to determine which qubit subspace we're dealing with. So first we have qubit one, and then we have qubit two in all of the tensor products. So this is qubit one, qubit two, qubit one, qubit two. And it's the same in this notation over here. If we consider this zx term, this is Pauli z in the qubit one subspace, and then tensor product with Pauli x in the qubit two subspace. So when we take the tensor product, we're combining these operators together, and we're creating an operator that has a four by four matrix representation. So we're dealing with a four-dimensional Hilbert space. It's really important uh, to stress that qubit one is the control qubit and qubit two is the target qubit. So that is a little bit ambiguous in this notation. That's why in other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist, I added some subscripts, one and two over here, to specify which uh, qubit is acting as the control and which is acting as the target. The action of this controlled knot is actually determined by the state of the control qubit. So the state of the control qubit determines the action of the gate on the target qubit, whether it implements this x, uh, this Pali x operator or not. That is determined by the control. So now let's have a look at another notation that we can use to describe this matrix representation. We can uh, use capital D to denote a diagonal matrix. And because this is not a diagonal matrix, we're going to have to generalize and consider a block diagonal matrix. And this block diagonal matrix is going to consist of i and then x. So what would this actually look like? We can write this out uh, in a more suggestive notation. What we're going to have is four quadrants. And each of these quadrants are going to be two by two matrices. So let's have a look at what we're going to find. First, we're going to find the identity in the top left. Then we're going to have zero with a little subscript two to tell us that this is a two by two matrix with all entries being zero. We're also going to have that in this top right. And then we're going to have Pauli X over here. So now we can close this bracket. So these are actually two by two matrices acting as the quadrants in this four by four matrix. And this guy over here and this guy, this is just condensed notation for the matrix representation of the controlled knot gate. And this is actually, if we, if we were to replace this X with a general unitary, this is the general format that we would have for a controlled unitary gate. And this is only for a two qubit system. And a two qubit system is described by a four dimensional Hilbert space. Let's add an extra control qubit. That's going to give us a CCX. So we're going to have CCX. This is the controlled controlled X gate or the controlled controlled not gate. And another name for this is the Toffoli gate. And the Toffoli gate can be expressed in a similar form. We can express the Toffoli gate 
as a matrix that has entries that are slightly different to this. We're going to have ii in the top left, then 0 with a subscript 4, and another 0 with a subscript 4. And then in the bottom right, we're going to have cx. So these are the quadrants in this matrix. This matrix is no longer a 4 by 4 matrix. Instead, it is a 8 by 8 matrix. 8 is the cube of 2. And we have to raise 2 to the power of 3 because we're dealing with a Hilbert space that is 8-dimensional. Now, why is it 8-dimensional? It's because we're dealing with 3 qubits. So let's have a look at this matrix representation. This matrix has been broken up into 4 quadrants. Each of these quadrants are 4 by 4 matrices. So we have a 4 by 4 matrix here, 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 and here. This is 4 by 4 identity, right? This is the identity matrix, which has four ones along the diagonal. I by itself, this I, is just the 2 by 2 identity matrix. So we just have two ones along the diagonal. And if we take the tensor product of the identity with the identity, we're going to get this 4 by 4 identity matrix. And that is the top left quadrant. What about this bottom right quadrant? Well, this bottom right quadrant is exactly the same as this matrix. So we're actually taking this matrix and we're inserting it in here. It is a quadrant in this bigger matrix. Now, let's write this out in an even more explicit way. So instead of writing it uh, in, in this term, uh, let, let's write it out even more explicitly. So let's, let's make it more suggestive so we can see what is going on. This ii, we can break up into i's along the diagonal and 0 2's on the off diagonal. What about this over here? We can break that up into 0 2, 0 2, 0 2, 0 2. And this one over here, we can also break that up into 0 2, 0 2, 0 2, and 0 2. What about this bottom part here? Well, we can just insert this matrix. So we're going to have the identity, then we're going to have 0 2, 0 2, and finally Pali X. So we have three identities and a Pali X over here. And we can actually make this a little more explicit or easier to read if I draw some lines over here to divide up the quadrants. So this quadrant is the same as this quadrant, this quadrant is the same as this quadrant, and the last two quadrants are also the same. And I'll put some brackets around here because this is a matrix. So this is the controlled, controlled, not gate. So another way to write this would actually be a block diagonal matrix with ii as the first entry, and then cx, the controlled not gate, as the second entry. And we could also write this as the block diagonal matrix with entries i, 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 and then Pauli x. So you can see that we are writing this in several different notations to notice the patterns that are occurring in this matrix representation. So all of this part over here with the identities, that is diagonal. The only off-diagonal part is occurring down here. So the ones in this Pali x are off to the side. So they are just one unit away from the diagonal. So that's why we can treat this as block diagonal, but we cannot treat this matrix as diagonal. It's not like the, uh, the, the controlled Z gate. The controlled Z gate, that is a diagonal matrix in its matrix representation. But over here, we are block diagonal. That's the best we can do. We can take this block diagonal notation with this capital D, and that allows us to notice some of the patterns that occur over here. Let's have a look at the circuit diagrams or the symbols that are used in quantum circuits for these guys. We have seen the controlled not gate diagram. It looks like this. We have the controlled qubit and then the target qubit down here. Because we're just adding an extra control qubit, we're going to have two control lines and one target. So down here, we're going to have the target. And here we're going to have a control and another control. And we can draw a line going down through here. So we can actually label these qubits. We can call this 1 and 2, and we can call this 1, 2, and 3. And if we label the qubits, we can specify the order. And we can uh, turn this around and use different combinations of control and target qubits. This Toffoli gate is extremely useful, and we're going to be using it to build quantum circuits. So the controlled NOT gate and the controlled controlled NOT gate are ubiquitous in quantum circuits, and they allow us to perform a lot of quantum algorithms with these quantum circuits. 
We're going to see all of that in later videos in the Quantum Mechanics playlist. You can find those other videos if you click over here.